In this video, I'll show you how to import GPX files into Osmond and use them for navigation. I'm referring here to GPXs that you pulled from the web or plotted on a PC. That is, their origin is external to Osmond itself. Here's an example, a GPX for an 87 kilometer motorcycle route north of San Francisco. Once I've downloaded it to my PC, I can move it to my phone with the usual methods. Here, I've simply emailed it to myself. To get the file into Osmond, I go to the Tracks tab in My Places. Press on the plus button. And find the file under Downloads. Pressing on it saves the file to the Track folder. I can change the color if I like. When I press the Directions button, I'm prompted to use the track for navigation. When I'm ready to navigate, I press Go. For simple turns, this works well enough. The only thing missing here is the street name. But look what's happening a little further back. Here, the directions aren't for every turnoff from one road to another. They're literally for every turn in the road. These so-called directions are largely meaningless. And unfortunately, that also includes voice guidance. Turn slightly right, then in 40 meters, turn slightly right. Turn slightly right, then in 150 meters, turn slightly left. What's going on? Osman is navigating the GPX, not the underlying map. This problem is not unique to Osmond, but because Osmond is an open source project, we can see the discussion on GitHub. Developers say it's a difficult problem to solve. So what can you do? I've got three suggestions. These are based on a lot of experimenting on the back roads here in Northern California. Your experience may be different. My first suggestion is to simplify the display so that when you glance at the screen, the information you see is meaningful. In Configure Map, I've changed the map style to Light RS. which renders roads in orange and gray, and the route in green. I've also enabled the points of interest labels. We'll use those later. In navigation settings, turn slightly right, then in I've unfortunately meters, had to set the right. voice guidance turn right, then in off. Meters. And I've put auto zoom off. That keeps the map scale consistent. You can set the scale to your liking with a combination of the zoom buttons. And with a long press here, the magnification. Here are the same stretch of turns, but now seen with fewer distractions. But this does mean that all turn guidance comes from the map itself. My second suggestion is to set some intermediate destinations. To help do this, I'm first going to configure the Quick Action button. This makes it easier to place waypoints more accurately.
For demonstration purposes, I'm just adding a couple, working from my destination back toward my starting point. These are places where I might overshoot the turn. Here's how they work. My first intermediate destination is here. This number is counting down to it. As I approach the turn, the flag disappears. And we start counting down to the next one. You can move intermediate waypoints you've already placed with a long press. You can also use a long press to delete them. but inserting an intermediate waypoint between two others is less straightforward. Here I'm adding a first intermediate waypoint that I'll insert between points two and three. Around here, these two suggestions seem to cover most situations. But you can also set alerts for street names by adding GPX waypoints. I'm placing one here, just behind my intermediate waypoint. It takes its name from the road it's on. As before, this number counts down to the turn. But now the street name is also shown. It typically pops up about 500 to 600 meters in advance. When you pass the waypoint, it lingers for a bit. Then disappears. You can also use GPX waypoints to mark points of interest. And last, but far from least, there's a matter of safety. When navigating with the GPS, especially when there's no audio instructions, there's a tendency to look here rather than here.